and welcome to my channel. Thanks for joining me today. I will be making a little bit of a twist on a bay window card. And if you happen to catch my TLC Designs card, I made a similar card in 5x7. Today's card is going to be a USA 2 size card. So I've got my standard USA 2 card base and on the front panel, I've scored it at two inches and at two and one quarter. So you can really replicate this on any size card. Basically on your card front, you want to find the center point and then score a line one eighth of an inch uh, to the left of that center point and an eighth of an inch to the right of that center point. And that gives you this very narrow quarter of an inch in the center. Normally with a bay window card, that center panel would actually be quite wide, probably wider than the two panels on either side of it because that would be where you'd place your focal image. However, I wanna do something a little bit different and I'm going for just something, um, you know, uh, a little bit, maybe a little bit unexpected, and so that's why I've given myself a very narrow uh, panel in the center there. And you'll see as this comes together uh, why I've done that. Before I get to that point, I do need to cut some mats and layers and stamp out my sentiment. So I'm crafting with a couple of new releases from the Artful Angel Shop. The sentiment high there is actually from a stamp set of the same name and it's a it's a smaller 3x4 stamp set that has all sentiments and it's meant to you could certainly use it on its own but it goes perfectly with the stand tall 4x6 stamp set which also features four really adorable giraffes this is just one of them and the stand tall stamp set does have a couple of sentiments as well, but with combined with high there, you do get a lot of different options. And what's great is that between the two, you can mix and match the sentiments because there are, you know, some large font sentiments, nice and bold ones, like the one that I've chosen for this card. I think would it would actually um uh it would actually emboss really well also. So that might be something I try on another card because it is a really nice, solid, bold font. But there are some sentiments that have um, like a thinner uh, sentiment and some that are uh, great for the inside of your card as well. So what I'm doing is um, I've used this die set from CC Designs and it's great because it has some nested circles that are both uh, scalloped as well as plain edged and have some lovely stitch detail around the border as well. And included in that same die set are some banner dies too that have the fishtail ends on both ends. So in a little bit, I'll be die cutting my sentiment out with the banner dies. Meanwhile, I've got this, um, it's basically an easel stopper that will get adhered to the inside of my card on this right hand edge here. And that piece has been cut to one inch wide by five and a half inches tall. So it's the full height of my card. And the easel stopper is just going to help that um, bay window window fold uh, stay kind of open and um, in in this sort of angled um, fold here. And for that very narrow quarter of an inch panel on the card front, I've just uh, cut out another strip of the same green solid color cardstock that I used on my easel stopper. And with this uh, yellow piece here, I'm intending to put these on the two side panels. It's not quite tall enough to stretch to the entire height of the card. So basically, I don't even know the measurements of this because I essentially just figured out 
what, how high it was. And then I, um, figured out what width I needed to cut it to so that I have a, uh, an even border of the white card base showing all the way around. So I think it ended up being something in uh, the sixteenths of an inch. So that's why I don't have a precise measurement for it. But one thing about um, those side panels though, I do suggest to cut your mat layer so that it does have a little bit or show a little bit of the white card base. Because if you try to cut a a uh, panel that's completely um, flush and fills that entire panel, it's going to be, I think some of the card base is still going to show because we have a fold there where those panels meet up with that center uh, quarter of an inch strip. So I think you're in any case going to see a little bit of the white card base where the fold is. And so if that's the case, why not have that white be intentional and um, have a little bit of white on all four edges? That's my rationale for, for cutting my mat layers a little bit smaller than um, the size of the panel. With the uh, center panel, I wanted to cut it um, exact because it's such a it's such a narrow <laughs> strip so cutting any smaller than a quarter of an inch would be a little bit tough but also um, because the easel stopper will be visible and that is extending all the way to the top uh, and bottom of the card I decided to have that same green strip but on that center quarter inch um, panel match along with that so that's sort of my rationale for how I've decided to cut my mats and layers. Of course, you can do what you think looks good to your eyes and um, definitely kind of change that up if you'd like. But now that my mats and layers are all cut, I've um, used the banner die to cut out my um, sentiment as well. The banner die itself was wider than what I needed so all I did was um, die cut a second time so that I have that nice professional fishtail um, edge on both the left and the right edge of the um, of the sentiment and that's because that's going to go right in the middle of my card so I definitely wanted to keep the that fishtail design on both ends and so now I can start to assemble everything so I've got my easel stopper in. This is basically how it's going to look when it's um, uh, opened up and put on display. So you'll see that front panel tucks in really nicely to uh, into the easel stopper. Then I've got a couple of my uh, matte layers here. These will go on either side of the um, panel, center panel. And so again, I've got I've got a pretty, it's still a pretty thin white border around uh, all four edges. And I, I do like the look of that, um, especially since I, I don't think there's any way to really um, hide all of the card base because we've got those folds there in the center. Then with my sentiment here, I've got some mats and layers of these uh, nested circle uh, dies and then my giraffe is going to go right on top there and you can kind of see what I'm going for here where the focal image and the um, sentiment are gonna be just um, attached to that, to that middle portion and here again because my the banner dies are wider I'm just positioning where to cut off so that I um, have as little waste as possible. So I've positioned my um, high there sentiment and I took the next larger banner die so that I can cut a matte layer for my sentiment. And again, I'm going to have to line this up and, um, and cut a second time so that I can get the nice fishtail ends 
on both sides. You could always just hand cut your fishtails, but uh, because I have the die and the die always creates this that really nice rounded edge, it just seems to look a little bit more um, polished or a little bit more finished than hand cutting would. But definitely if it's easier for you to just um, maybe glue your sentiment on and then uh, cut your fishtail to match, that's definitely an option as well. But here's a little dry fitting, which I like to do just to make sure of um, how everything looks. And and the card looks great, you know, completely flat, but it also I think looks really fun when you have it propped open because it almost looks like those middle um, panels, the sentiment and the focal image are, just kind of uh, floating around there. And so that's the um, intention behind leaving such a narrow um, center panel of my bay uh, window fold. If you were going for a more traditional bay window, you would just um, score your lines so that they're further apart from one another than the quarter of an inch that I have. And then you just wanna make sure you kind of have an equal length um, or width on the uh, panels to the left and to the right. Now I've got this extra little bit of twine that I must have forgotten to use on a previous card because it's already cut down, it was already tied in a bow, and I decided uh, since it matches, the green of the twine matches my card, I thought it would be a nice accent on this card as well. I'm just trying to figure out how, how I can use it, um, where it might make sense to place it. And, um, and so what I ended up deciding on is to actually attach this little bit instead of to the giraffe to... Um, attach it to my sentiment. And I thought this might look kind of cool where you, um, almost like on a gift box where you sort of wrap the ribbon around the two opposite corners of a gift box and then, you know, tie a nice little uh, bow on the top. That's what I decided to go for. But instead of um, using up so much of the twine to wrap it around the back side, what I decided to do was I just put a glue dot in this one corner and then I attached the two ends of the twine and snipped it off. And then on the opposite corner, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll put a glue dot there so that I can anchor the two ends of my twine. And that way I'm using hardly any twine at all because no one's going to see the back. You just need you know, the front to look the way that you want it to. So why why bother looping all the way <laughs> around the back? But the the thing with this is that because the this panel needs to um, only be attached in that center column where you see the green strip of um, cardstock, I need to take away all the sticky from the glue dot that isn't um, behind the twine. And that's why I've brushed on some, this happens to be baby powder, but you can use any anti-static powder, cornstarch, anything that you have. So that when the card is actually folded down flat, those two corners don't adhere to the front of your card. Otherwise the card won't uh, bend and, and fold the way that it should. So be sure to, um, if you're going to do what I've done and, and used some glue behind there, be sure to um, brush it with some anti-static powder so that it's not sticky where you don't want it to be sticky. With my giraffe, I am using some of my low profile foam. This is one millimeter thick and that just gives it just a little bit of um, dimension so that he pops out a little bit more. But there are some parts of him that are small enough to where it would be really fiddly to try to get some foam behind there. So I'm going to use my 3D Kalau glue gel, which um, I couldn't find where I have it already in a nice syringe tip. So I'm just going to use it straight out of the tube. This is, this is how it comes where if you get the full kit, it comes with the, the full tube of glue gel and as well um, the syringe which is probably if you've seen my other videos where I've used it that's how I generally apply it 
And that's always refillable. So once once that's empty, you can always refill the syringe with more glue gel. But you can take it straight out of the tube like this as well. And I'm just using my little pokey tool to um, to just smear on some blobs of glue, especially where there's areas that um, are kind of small pieces of cardstock, because I think those are more fragile and there's more um, potential for those to get bent or or possibly even tear off, just depending on you know how it's handled. And so. I just uh, smeared on a bit of glue and the nice thing with the glue gel is that um, it doesn't matter if you put um, too much because you can always push it down to where you think it's level and if some of it does sort of um, ooze out because it's a um, it's not a water-based glue you can always just rub that off. So I lost a little bit of footage where I adhered it and that's a, a bit of key uh, <laughs> information. When you glue your pieces down where you see this pink um, sort of rounded rectangle, you only want to put glue on that center panel, basically where you see the green um, vertical stripe, because the two ends need to stay free and clear and be able to lift up off of the card front. So you can see that here when um, I tilt this, the only place it's attached is in that center column there. So that's that's a key um, point. And my apologies that my camera cut out and, and didn't record that part because that is an important thing to mention. But I just love um, how uh, this card presents and it's just perfect begging to be um, sort of put on display. If you enjoyed this card, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. And if you want to catch new videos as I post them, consider subscribing to my channel and ringing the notification bell. Thanks so much. Until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.